Hello, this is Chain Reaction on Radio 4. I am Catelyn Moran, and this week's guest is the BAFTA, Emmy, Rose Dore, and British Comedy Award-winning comedian, actress, and screenwriter. A woman so inherently amusing that, had she been born a million years ago as a germ or a lizard, she still would have invented comedy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is the goddess that is, Jennifer Saunders. That's very nice. So lovely to see you here. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to be here. Nice to be asked by you, especially. Oh, well, thank you. It's lovely to have you here. I feel, <laughs> I feel affirmed as a human being. Basically, I asked Jennifer out on a blind date on the radio, and she said, yes, this is... <laughs> my dream came true. So can you first of all describe what you're wearing to, uh, to everybody who's at home? Oh, I'm wearing um, a sort of baggy dress, a baggy <laughs> black dress with some... With some... Mm, thank you. Uh, Someone likes some, baggy out there. Uh, leggings. <laughs> <laughs> a small leather jacket over the top. And um, some shoes I bought this afternoon that I'm uh, wearing in for a wedding on Saturday. <laughs> There's a colour mix. One, one's been on display. It's been fingered. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, but I got a discount. I got £50 off. <laughs> That's how expensive the shoes were. <laughs> and could you, for the people at home who can't see you, um, um, uh, describe your expression to us as well, please? My expression? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one... Um, ooh, my expression. It's, it's a kind of... I think I'm smiling, but I'm quite nervous, so I'm not quite smiling. <laughs> it's a nervous kind of smile. Is it a slightly tense Mona Lisa? Tense, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think but I am actually smiling. Yes. Yeah. Now, your eyes are warm and friendly. I mean, you yeah. always look to me very regal. There's, a, there's an air oh. of regality about you. I think you. that's generally shyness or something like that. Reserve or pure hatred. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> which one. So tell us what you've been doing today before you came here, obviously apart from buying shoes. I've had a great day today. Yes. Because I, um, my daughters came over the house and we all had hair and nails. Did you not have any before? <laughs> All bald. <laughs> I actually don't have any nails, and but these are all stuck on nails. For BAFTA. Yes. Well, this is what I was going to say. You received a BAFTA. I did. Being a special I comedy lady in comedy. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> she's uh, she's got awards. Yeah. So yeah. How do you approach your average award ceremony? Because you've done a lot now. I mean, oh, they are they're quite a normal thing I'm for you not, now, aren't I'm, they? I'm not fond. I have to say. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Endless interviews and stuff, and and then and then. <laughs> Yeah, very, very drunk. Yes. I love interviews, though. <laughs> I'm very fond of interviews, but not with intelligent people you see on a BAFTA carpet. <laughs> they wouldn't be asking if you bought shoes this morning. And, yes, sir. No, and whose shoes done intelligent they are. questions, I feel. It's been very different to BAFTA. But but no. I, do, I hate all that, that kind of gubbins that goes with it. It used to be that you used to go along to a hotel and have a lovely meal and get utterly arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone would stand up and go, everybody, they've got some awards. <laughs> and we go, oh! <laughs> and people would go up and get their BAFTAs, you know, and go, oh, cheers, thanks. <laughs> hey. you know. And it was so much fun. And now it's all controlled by the cameras and all controlled by the, the press and the PR and everything. Um, and it just isn't as much fun. Was it more fun being famous 20 years ago than it is now? Could you get away with more? Oh, I, I, think, I think it was, yeah. Because the, you didn't have all this press. You didn't have all the magazines. I mean, there wasn't even Hello! magazine. Can, Can you, you imagine, imagine a yes. world? <laughs> Can you imagine that world? Yeah. Um, but there was none of that stuff. You didn't ever felt you were being watched or you had to be a certain way. Well, no camera phones, so I mean, no, no, no. members of the public could dob you in or go on no. Twitter, I see so. No, I love that thing they do, people on trains. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Maybe someone there's laughing at the irony about the fact that I'm on Twitter all the time going, I'm sitting next to Gary Oldman in the cinema. <laughs> No, I love that when people pretend to be reading a text, holding the camera near your face. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so. I always, when I used to watch you on TV, I totally idolised you, and I used to imagine you going out on the town. I mean, this is the imaginary world that I had of what London would be like at the time. <laughs> you and Dawn going out on the town with Banana Rama and, <laughs> and probably also Kirsty McCall, and just having the best times of your life. I mean, were you actually that, doing that? that? Please happens. tell me you were. It absolutely <laughs> happens. I have to say, the nights with Banana Rama were some of the best nights of my life. <laughs> and I got a lot of gags from Banana Rama, 
because they were big vodka drinkers. <laughs> yeah, big vodka really. drinkers. And Dawn and I were very unprofessional. We had no... We said, well, I'll have a white wine. And no, all right, I'll have a vodka. Yeah, I'll have a vodka. I'll have a vodka. I'll have a vodka. I'll have a vodka. And, and it was... Um, when I started doing Ab Fab, I remembered all the falls that I saw Banana Rama do. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw one of them coming out of a cab, bottom first, <laughs> and hitting the road. And I thought, that's, that's class. <laughs> is class. They were great. They were such good fun. Oh, this is literally the happiest thing. <laughs> this is the happiest thing that happened to me all year because I just imagined it, but it was really happening at the oh, time. Oh, yeah, we had, we had good time. There was that story about Banana Rum, wasn't there, when after they'd done uh, Robert De Niro's waiting, apparently they bumped into him in a nightclub and, uh, and someone introduced them and went, uh, this is Banana Rum, they've just sung a song about you uh, called Robert De Niro's waiting, talking Italian. And uh, I can't remember which Banana Rama it was, maybe the banana in the middle, um, <laughs> who, uh, who was just instantly sick all over his feet. <laughs> They were, they were good. They were good fun. So what was, what was, your, what was your motivation for, for, for doing it? Why did you want to... Um, it's I'm, a lot of effort, isn't it? It's I mean, qu- it's, well, is it, though, really? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a nice way to make a living. Um, Dawn and I did it just for ourselves initially. And we just used to make ourselves howl with laughter. Mm-hmm. Give ourselves dares, you know. Um, walk up the street looking like that. Walk down, you know, <laughs> or, and we used to pretend to be punks and, like, have tampons hanging from our ears. <laughs> and, like, go and try and scare people on the tube by just staring at them hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just pointless. And then we just wet ourselves laughing. <laughs> and uh, then we started to get a little act together. We, did, uh, we wrote a sketch for the College Cabaret. Um, because Dawn was more motivated by pure hatred. Um, really? <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to prove to the actors on the course that because we were training as teachers, yes. that we could do it as well. But we only did it at college then. And it wasn't until I saw an advert um, in the stage, Comedy Acts Wanted, for the comic strip, as it was mm-hmm. in Soho. And I rang Dawn up, and she was teaching then. She had a job, and, and said, let's go for it. And after that, it just felt like it just sort of went on a roll, and we just kept doing it. And it's the greatest joy to sit in a room with someone who just makes you laugh so hard. <laughs> it's just heaven. I was reading about the, uh, the early days of the comic strip that uh, various celebrities would turn up and come and watch. Uh, Dustin Hoffman, Jack Nicholson, and Robin Williams was in the audience once and joined you on stage. Yeah, he was in. He'd be sitting there with a few Japanese tourists who thought they were seeing a completely different act because <laughs> it was Raymond's Review Bar. So there was a few theatres that had sex shows on and there was the comic strip. Mm-hmm. And it was quite easy to get confused. <laughs> uh, but it was just, it was a seedy little theatre, you know. And I remember being utterly, utterly starstruck. I remember he sweated a lot and his T-shirt was absolutely sopping wet. And I had a spare T-shirt that I gave to him. Oh, and so Robin Williams wore my T-shirt, and then had it dry cleaned and sent back to me. Wow! I was, you know, it was, I was totally in awe. You wouldn't expect those kind of manners and indeed levels of housekeeping from someone with a massive cocaine addiction. You might have people. Quite, I you think he had people. <laughs> so. Tell me, I mean, after the first comic strip went out, did you feel famous the next day? Um, not really, no. I, I don't remember thinking that. I think because we were such a little self-contained, happy little gang, and it felt a lot like family in the comic strip, because um, we all knew each other so well. Um, and you all married each other like Abba. we all married each so. other. And, um, <laughs> it's comedy Abba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't think, no, we didn't really feel famous, because it, it felt quite, um, although it was opening night of Channel 4, um, it still felt slightly new, and I think new things took quite a while to sort of catch on. There's never a day where you're told you are famous now, or kind of, or how famous you are. Let's get some numbers on it. Out of ten, how famous do you think you are? <laughs> Can I remind you, you were an absolutely fabulous and you're Jennifer Saunders. Just, <laughs> just, just to put that in as a, as a base. All right, I think I'm about a seven. I don't know, who else do you think is on a seven? I mean, I'd say Lawrence Lorraine and Bowen is probably on a seven. <laughs> But yeah, no, I reckon you're more than a seven, love. Oh, all right. 
Yeah. <laughs> Good. I'll do some research. So um, Bono once described the nod. This is like kind of if you're a famous person and you go into a room with other famous people, yeah. but even though you've never met each other, you can just nod and go, yeah, saw you in the paper, we know each other, yeah. You've sort of spoken before about being quite shy and kind of quite different stuff. Do you feel you can acknowledge the nod? Do you see the nod? or no, you I'm rise old, down I'm old nod? enough to acknowledge the nod now. Yes. It was really hard when you are younger. Because you're just really kind of gauche and overexcited about A, seeing them, and then not wanting to look like you really care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's so many things happening. That you think, oh, no, I don't want to look at him. I'm not, I don't even care about him. I hate him. <laughs> What's he even going to look over there? <laughs> but now when you're older, you walk in and you do. You go, oh, hello. Oh. You acknowledge the nod. Yeah, they acknowledge the nod. That's a very good phrase. Yes. Yeah. Can you start a nod? Have you started a nod? I mean, do you nod at younger people? Is it down to well, you now? Often you walk into a room and you think you might have met them, so you have to do a nod. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> but Covering the biggest nod. fear that you've actually insulted them as well. You see, and that used to be a big thing when we did French and Saunders that you'd walk into a room and go, "Oh, look, there's oh no." Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, no. So I'm just trying to think of people that you did impressions of and stuff. I mean, did you ever bump into Bross? Um, we did bump into Bross once. Really? How did yeah, that Because go? When, when the programmes were all made at the BBC and the studios were always being used, we'd be doing a show, we'd be in rehearsing, and the Top of the Pops would be on and stuff. So everyone was mixing all the time. You could always go into Top of the Pops studio and go, Hello, hello, Bross, we love you. Um, <laughs> and there was always that kind of feeling. And it felt creative to be in there. And we always used to go in and, and write in there because there were so many people around who could help you. The joy of walking into the BBC is knowing the programmes that have been made there. You know, you see pictures of Morecambe and Wise and all these other greats on the walls, and they worked from those offices. And there were whole generations of kids who know the postcode, W12, AQT, AQT. and it was the Citadel of Dreams, and that was where you would go. And, but it's that kind of, this the mingling, everyone's there, aren't they? Yeah, and, and it is, of... that makes everything much more creative. And I think new people coming in, there's a great sense of awe almost. And it, I think it's an absolute tragedy, that building's going. I, I can't actually believe it. No, it does seem to be was. a weird time for comedy, particularly at the BBC mm. at the moment. I mean, is it harder to get stuff made now? Are you kind yeah, of... Yeah, much harder. I think what's happening is I always used to think the BBC was great because the BBC was like a great curator of talent. And what's happening now is it's becoming a prescriber. And so the executives say, well, we need an eight o'clock. We want that. We want that. Oh, we'd like it more like that. We'd like it a bit more of this and that. So they're finding writers and going, yeah, that's all right. But what we really want is that, you know, rather than using the massive amount of talent that's out there and showing it off, they think they've got a better idea somehow. So, let's talk about Absolutely Fabulous. At the point mm -hmm. where that happens, you are the biggest thing in comedy, the biggest thing on TV. You're famous all around the world. Um, but at that point, you are also a mum to two small children? Yes. Yes. So, I mean, are you... I mean, most of the people at that point would go hog wild. You are kind of, you know, being flown around the world and stuff, you're winning all these awards and stuff, but you're kind of going home to the kids, presumably. Or did you go mm -hmm. hog wild? Did you part the kids for a while and go... Well, there was a bit of both, really. Yes. Because you get the, the chance to do a bit of both. Um... Yeah, because once Ab Fab sort of became a hit, we were given lots of trips places. You know, we'd be flown to New York or this or that um, for little parties. <laughs> for, I don't know why, but it was true. Really? Did you literally go to New York for a party? We were taken to New York for a party, an really? Ab Fab party that someone, someone was holding. Themed around absolutely Joe and I used to have a ball. <laughs> We used to go there, oh, look at the hotel room, and, you know, and they always go to the bar. And then we just go out all night in a limo. It was really good fun. But I suppose being famous for Absolutely Fabulous is great, because if you are going to parties and getting hog drunk and falling out of taxis in the way that you had seen Banana Rama do previously, yes. people would just think you're being in character. They would, it's just kind of like, it's, it. just, it's just, every time we turn up anywhere, there'd just be champagne. <laughs> champagne for the ladies we were honestly wherever we went there was there was the idea of, of champagne and and that's a good we idea we were always having to look like we were drinking and having fun and we were <laughs> and did you feel your own sense of fashion slipping i mean was there a sort of a desire to dress a bit more neon orange i mean did you kind of... <laughs> did they no, merge i think actually i hadn't really got a sense of fashion until i did amp fab because i used it as a it was sort of a joke really you know <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was only because the fashion world took it quite seriously that I got into lots of fashiony things, yeah. you know, and meeting lots of fashion people and going to fashion shows and all that sort of thing, which was basically research. 
but I, there were also some very nice clothes. <laughs> Did you get lots of free stuff? That was why I was mainly thinking no, as you were saying that. No, not free stuff. Did they never give you free no, stuff? No, don't, I don't do free stuff. I'll tell you why. It's because if you do free stuff, you always have to be nice. Yeah. And if you buy it, you can be as horrible as you like about it. <laughs> but if you get free stuff, there's, there's always something. You yes. Because you can't do a satire and be given free stuff. No. It's, it's kind of hard. Mm. Would you, are you? I mean, you had Stella McCartney on the show. If I had Stella McCartney mm. on my show, if I had a show, um, I would, in some way, be trying to act in a way that would inspire her to create a handbag named after me. <laughs> I've, I've just kind of always wanted a handbag named after me, and I don't quite know how I would do that. I'd maybe kind of look like I needed more pockets or something. But I mean, did you try and do that? And would you like her to design a bag for you? I didn't think about that. That wasn't on my <laughs> radar. <laughs> no, it would be nice, actually, to have a handbag. She does great handbags. Yes. And if, the, if she did, I'm just going to keep hammering this, hoping she's listening and will be inspired yes. to create a handbag for you. <laughs> I'm going to try and gift that for you. That's going to be my... Well, I'm going to try and achieve for, the, for you by the end of this evening. Um, would you want it to be called the Jennifer or the Saunders? Uh, the Saunders. The Saunders. Yeah, that's like better, it. isn't it? The Jennifer's a bit wet. <laughs> It's a bit, so it's got a sort of 50s feel to it. But the, but the Saunders, it's got an edge. Do you like your name, Jennifer? Who, what do people call you? What does Adrian call you? Um. <laughs> he... <laughs> yeah, you know, I have no idea. Where's my daughter? <laughs> my daughter's here, she'll know. Ella? Jennifer. Jennifer, he calls me Jennifer. <laughs> That's quite spooky that you don't know what he calls you. Well, he probably says darling quite a lot, you see. Oh. Doesn't he? Probably mm -hmm. people call me Fur if they know me very well. And that came from my nickname, which is my Twitter name, Fairy Frump. I was going to ask you about that. Why are you called Fairy because Frump on Twitter? Because my father always used to call me Fairy Frump and Frumalaka. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just... Because when I first went on Twitter, I, didn't, I just thought I'd go on for... Um, Five minutes. That's what everyone thinks. purposes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have a look and I'll I thought, be off. no, I'll put my name out there. And then, of course, I got hooked. Yes. I said one thing, yes. got a reply, and oh no, I'll just do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and now I try not to do it so much. Yeah. And then sometimes I put a picture of my dog, and I think, that's no good, really, is it? <laughs> but, you know. It's a very beautiful dog, though. She's a delight. At the moment, being a funny woman is big business. When you started, you'd invented it, obviously. Um, but now other people have <laughs> caught on and learned that ladies can be funny. I mean, Bridesmaids done like a billion box oh, office I know, now. I'm so pleased about that. Well, you weren't kind of like, I could have had that. <laughs> no, I think that's great. Yes. And I think it's great that they got to make the film and people get to realise that that's actually what people want to go and see. Yes. And that women are the biggest cinema audience. Older women, especially, actually. And, and yet we get endless people running about with guns that I just don't get. Yes, yes. You can't smoke, but you're allowed to run around with a gun. That's what I don't get. But I was so pleased about Bridesmaid because I thought it, they were such strong comedy performers and they're proper working comedians too, and I love that. Yes. Mm. No, no, no. I'd be I've... very, very proud. Well, the great thing is, well, obviously when a film's made that amount of money, it's just kind of other women will now be encouraged to do stuff as well. You'd I mean, hope so, but I bet they won't be. Don't you think? Uh, no, no, no. I, they, they, will want, they will feel encouraged. Yes. But I don't think the um, executives quite get it yet. Well, you get asked really weird questions or, or told really weird things. There was one meeting a friend of mine was in recently, and uh, she'd written a show, and they loved it. Um, but they said, well, the problem is that we've got another women project at the moment, <gasps> so we can't do it. Oh, you see? And you were like... What, what, 52% of the population are now going to be represented by one program? Is that kind of... And, they, and that, that was it. They were like, we, in three years' time, come back. We might be able to do it then, kind of once we've got this stuff off our schedule. And you're like, that's weird. No, it's still easier for boys. It is. Mm. But the one thing I was thinking of, like, um, uh, with a lot of funny women around at the moment, like Tina Fey, uh, Kristen Wiig, who's yes. done Bridesmaids and stuff, um, there's always a point where they get asked to do the kind of sexy, glamorous shoot. And kind of, again, that wasn't something, that wasn't a pressure that you had at that point, kind of, you know, when you started no. off. I mean, have you ever had any bikini shots done? Has anyone no. ever done that? Not even for myself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the mail online is a terrible thing, because you can get sucked in. I was going to say. <laughs> my, <yeah. laughs> my friends, my friends got like, I hate this. I'll look at that. Oh, oh. I know. <laughs> What's that about? Uh, yes. My friends call it the sidebar of shame. Yes. Because you just you get pulled in, right? It's all the women Absolutely. having a terrible time. You do get sucked yes. in. Yes. Yeah. There, there are just so many magazines now and so much to fill. I'd ban them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but 
from ones I like. In the course of my research, um, I watched uh, your appearance on the Roseanne show. It oh was, God, it was yeah, awful. No, it looked absolutely it. awful. Do you want to know the whole story? Yes, I really do. Oh, <laughs> Roseanne said, she said, you guy, you gotta come over. You gotta come over and do the episode. And she said, what are we'll do is, is that- just see, am I going to do the accent? <laughs> Hi, are you? Yes, I will do it. Thank you. <laughs> I triggered the catchphrase. I'm so happy. <laughs> and she said, uh, we, you, they did like a little thing just after the titles in their show where someone would come and sit at the bar or in her house. And uh, she said, would we do that, you know? And uh, we said, oh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun. And then she said, would you do it as Patsy and Eddie? And we said, oh, that's not such fun. And then, we, <laughs> then she said, no, it'll be really funny. And we went, oh, hell, free trip to L.A. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we decided, yes, we do it. We got out there, um, and we were staying in this hotel, and they said there would be a script there for you. No script. No script arrived for, like, three days. <sighs> And then, and then we said, oh, do you think there'll be... A t-? And then they said, no, what we'll do is we'll do a table read of the whole, the whole show. Um, and you come along to that, and then you, you'll hear what your lines will be. And we're thinking, oh, this is a bit weird. Yeah. So we went to this table read, and it was so bizarre. Because the script, there was, they hadn't really written a script. It was a tiny, tiny amount of writing. And after most phrases, people sitting behind you would start clapping and laughing. Oh, my and go, God. Oh, <laughs> 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 like that. And because they were timing, they think, no, there'll be a good gag in there. So even though the gags hadn't been written, they were timing the amount of laugh probably on the gag. Oh, psychic ghost yes. laughter. That's spooky. Oh, it was absolutely bizarre. And... Roseanne was pregnant and had decided that she was going to direct this show and be in it. But I couldn't act with her. I had to have a stand-in to act to say her lines during rehearsal because she was so neurotic. And she eventually ended up in a wheelchair, wheeling herself around the set, <laughs> but not speaking to me. Not speaking not to Not speaking why? to me because I don't know why. She would not rehearse with me. A tiny little Asian woman... Um, <laughs> was saying Roseanne's lines to me. All, I mean, literally all the way through rehearsal. It was insane. <laughs> and the only great thing was Laurie Metcalf was such a joy. Yes. And is such a brilliant actress. And she sort of um, just kept apologising. Oh, she's not always like this. Oh, actually, she is always like this. She's crazy. She's crazy. Um, <laughs> so, and it, was, it was just, honestly, the, most, the maddest time. Yeah. Well, she was difficult to work with at that point. I mean, you would She'd had her bottom lip suctioned at that point. Really? <laughs> yes. Could you tell? <laughs> Did she tell you? <laughs> That's weird. I don't know if I shouldn't say it on the radio. No, go on. They can't right. see. Um, <laughs> but she didn't appear to have an arse crack. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Because she'd had this dress on. Just have a look at it. They had this dress on that went really, really low, all the way down. And it was like a big open back, but they'd put a bit of gauze over it, you know. All open back, all the way right, right down. But right down to... to you know, <laughs> the arse crack there was no arse crack it was honestly remarkable so weird totally smooth like a weeble all the way down (laughs) I hope she's got one now (laughs) I'm sure she has (laughs) so was that the worst experience of your professional career a professional career, probably, uh, yes. Uh, I think that's... What was the worst experience of your non-professional career? I haven't got a non-professional career. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing that you could do career-wise or, um, would be to be offered a damehood. Would you accept? Bloody a dame. Comedy dame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, of course I'd accept it, because I, I think it would be hilarious. <laughs> dame. But I think when it comes to a double act, they're always, they're always a bit sort of nervous of giving one to one and not the other, you see. So we'd have to be a double dame. Oh, really? we'd have to. So, if, so if you were offered one but Dawn wasn't, would you nobly turn it down? If they were like, this is your only chance. We're never going to come oh, back I and ask you one again. Would you? I don't this, know. Would you? Which is more important, the Dawn crown would or turn the it down. Would she, For you? No, she would turn it down. Oh, right, oh, full stop. Yeah. Well, there you go. You can go for it then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> she won't mind because she didn't want one. Yeah. All right, yeah, I would. <laughs> I would. 
I'm going to do a quick fire round. Okay. I decided I was going to inject a quick fire round into this. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, very quickly uh, the last thing you bought. These shoes? Yes. Uh, last time you were drunk. Last <laughs> night. <laughs> it's true. Where did you go? I was out with a friend. We were actually working. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like you were with Banana Rama no, that time. I was time. out with um, <laughs> the producer of the musical I'm writing, and uh, we had a couple of martinis. <laughs> Last time you called 999? Uh, f when my mother had a stroke about two years ago. <laughs> and were they okay. efficient? Was that okay? That was, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad then. No, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> she found it hilarious that she couldn't get any of her normal words out. And um, so I phoned 999 and the air ambulance arrived and it landed in her garden. Mm -hmm. And she kept saying, take a picture. <laughs> She was being strapped to the, you know, the stretcher and everything. Take a picture. Are you filming this? <laughs> oh dear, it was, it was funny. And did you get a picture? Yeah, I've got the whole thing on film. <laughs> you just mentioned then uh, that you're working on a musical now. This is the Spice Girls musical, is it Spice not? Spice Girls musical. I just, I knew it was ha going to happen. And my name had been put forward and I said to my agent, oh no, I, I would really like to do that because they meant so much to my girls when they were growing up and we were such massive Spice Girl fans um, that I just thought, oh, I, don't want, I, don't, I want them to go back and see this musical and enjoy the songs in the same way and have the same sense of joy that they had when they listened to the Spice Girls. So I did it, I did it really for them and, yes. you know, and obviously for the money. <laughs> And how's it, I mean, how's it working out? How do you write a musical? What do you do? I do know it's really complicated. <laughs> and are the characters... It's terrifying. It's actually terrifying. And are the Spice Girls characters in it? Are you kind no, of writing no, stuff? No, no, no. It's a different story. It's a story with, that uses the songs. So um, it's a Mamma Mia-esque kind of thing? Yes. And how's that going now? Are you kind of are you anywhere near finishing it? Yeah, uh, we... Yes, I've finished it just about. I think we've got a theatre and it'll open in December. Woohoo! Hey, that's exciting. A clap! <laughs> I'm so sad that our time's run out, so I'm going to have to say, Jennifer Saunders, thank you so much. It's been oh, such a privilege. thank you. Thank you so much for asking me. Norm, thank you. Thank you very much.